Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a review of this book, Not By Genes Alone, How Culture Transformed Human Evolution, by Peter J. Richardson and Robert Boyd. Um, to start with, I'll show you my copy. Um, not my annotations, I hasten to add. That's what happens when you buy books secondhand over the internet. Um, the book is um, basically a book about cultural evolution, and it takes a Darwinian perspective, viewing culture as part of biology, um, and t says that um, there's inheritance and variation and selection in cultural evolution resulting in cumulative adaptations. Um, so um, same kind of perspective as memetics, basically. Um, the book, um, in fact, doesn't um, adopt the memetic terminology. It's written by anthropologist and uh, professor of environmental science, and um, it actually rejects the terminology terminology that Richard Dawkins um, prefers, um, and I'll first of all um, read a couple of sections from the book that relate to that issue, um, and then make some comments. Um, it says, um, page 63, some authors use the term meme coined by evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins, but this connotes a discrete, faithfully transmitted gene-like entity, and we have good reasons to believe that a lot of culturally transmitted information is neither discrete nor faithfully transmitted, so we will use the, use the term cultural variant. Um, and as a bit of research um, before writing this review, um, I did some um, searches on the internet to see how widespread their terminology had become, and um, I did a search for a cultural variant on Google and another search for meme on Google, and um, meme um, had um, over 12,000 times as many hits as cultural variant, um, so um, I think their terminology um, has failed to become widely established. It's true that their book is more recent than Richard Dawkins. Um, they published in 2005, and Dawkins dates back from 1976, but um, they haven't created a very good meme there, basically, um, and I don't think it will spread. Um, I think their terminology is on the rocks, and um, we should stick to Richard Dawkins' um, synonym for um, the um, unit of um, cultural inheritance. Um, so that's the first thing to say. Um, they have a bit more criticism on page 82 in a section entitled Cultural Variants Are Not Replicators. Um, and there it says, in his book, The Extended Phenotype, Rich Dawkins eloquently argues that cumulative adaptive evolution depends on the existence of what he calls replicators, entities that reproduce faithfully, that are long enough lived to affect the world, and that can increase in number. Replicators give rise to cumulative adaptive evolution because they are targets of natural selection. Genes are replicators. They are copied with astounding accuracy. They can spread rapidly, and they persist throughout the lifetime of an organism, directing its machinery of life. Dawkins thinks that beliefs and ideas are also replicators and coined the term meme to describe a cultural replicator. Memes, Dawkins thinks, can be reproduced, copied from one mind to another, thereby spreading through a population, controlling the behaviour of people who hold them. And it says, we doubt that beliefs and skills are replicators, at least in the same sense that genes are. And it goes on to give an argument by Dan Sperber, um, arguing that um, they don't reproduce with very much um, in the way of high fidelity. Um, so that's their criticism um, of memetics. Um, and they've written another paper which goes into that in more detail, but that's the um, synopsis that they give in the book. Um, and um, it all boils down to um, the term replicator. Um, and um, their criticism... Um, well, um, in the extended phenotype, which Dawkins offers a definition of the term replicator, so um, misunderstandings can't really arise, um, and what he says he means by the term replicator is anything in the world of which copies are made, and um, by that definition, I don't think there can be any doubt that um, ideas and cultural, culturally inherited information, um, there's copies that are made of it. So um, the criticism here um, isn't right. They're um, claiming that um, Rich Dawkins used the term replicator in a sense that denoted faithful copies, and which Dawkins clearly defined the term in um, the extended phenotype to mean anything in the world of which copies are made, um, and so he um, he didn't um, imply that um, it was high fidelity copies. Um, so, um, however, um, that's a very bad um, piece of terminology used there by Richard Dawkins, um, a serious mistake in my view. Um, the term replicator has a strong fit strong implications of high fidelity copying um, when used as an ordinary English term. It's got the same root as the word replica. Um, and there's another term which means the same thing as um, which Dawkins is defining the term um, replicator to mean, and that's reproducer. A reproducer is something of, of which copies are made, and replicator has strong connotations of high fidelity copying. So um, Boyd and Richardson um, 
by taking um, the term as though it's an ordinary English word, which um, seems quite um, excusable to me. Um, but anyway, Richard Dawkins did offer a technical definition of the term. Um, it's, it's bad for Richard Dawkins to have done that. He shouldn't have um, redefined a common English word to have an esoteric technical meaning that's different from its common usage. Um, but that's basically what happened in the extended phenotype. So um, the criticism um, is based on a misunderstanding of the terminology that Richard's using. Um, he, did, he doesn't use the term replicator in its conventional sense. Instead, he redefines it to mean something different. Um, so um, that's um, the, um, my um, assessment of the criticism. The criticism's um, not um, actually criticising what Richard Dawkins actually said. Um, instead, they're just using um, the conventional definition of the term replicator, and that's understandable, but um, not what Dawkins originally meant. Um, having said that, um, there is... Um, Hull, for example, has gone on to um, give um, a basis of evolution that is based on replicator, where replicator is defined as a high-fidelity copying process, um, and such a basis of evolution is wrong. Um, information theory says that you don't need um, high-fidelity copying processes to create um, entities that transmit information um, in sequence between um, various different receivers and transmitters and get high mutual information between one end of the chain and the other, um, because you can use error correction and error detection um, technology in order to um, improve your copying fidelity. So um, a basis um, or having a replicator with the implication of high fidelity copying as the basis of um, evolutionary theory is um, wrong basically for the reasons that um, Boyd and Richardson give in this book. Um, so um, that's um, one thing to say. I don't think that their criticism of memetics is sufficient to discard the terminology. Um, the good thing about memetics is it's got some catchy terminology and that it clearly um, has an analogy between gene and meme, which is quite good, and an analogy between genetics and memetics. Um, and those are worthwhile analogies, um, highly um, useful, um, and there's no point in rejecting them. Um, so there's no point in fighting against the terminology as far as I can see. So... Um, and then a few more things about the book. Um, the book is, is a good one to recommend to anybody who says that there's no um, experimental evidence for cultural evolution. Um, the book's packed full of um, lots of detailed analysis of cases of cultural evolution, showing um, gene meme coevolution, um, showing cases where um, culture is maladaptive, um, just um, the whole um, raft of um, things that you can um, imagine in cultural evolution. This book has um, detailed scientific references and studies um, relating to practically all of them. So. Um, it's a good book um, in terms of the science content. Um, not so good in, t in terms of the kind of um, far-seeing um, implications. Um, they don't think um, cultural evolution is as big a deal as I seem to think it is. Um, one of the biggest revolutions in evolutionary biology, um, at least since um, Watson and Crick, and maybe even since Darwin, although um, Darwin, ironically, um, was quite um, favourably inclined towards cultural evolution. So... Um, claiming it's a revolution that's occurred since Darwin is a bit of a strange thing to say. Um, anyway, they don't really um, go into the possibility of um, a memetic takeover, and that seems like a big and important theme in memetics, and they um, give that a zero page space, basically, so um, that wasn't um, up my street particularly. Um, Sue Blackmore, for example, um, is an example of somebody who's interested in cultural evolution and actually understands that there's a possibility um, that memes um, may completely displace genes, um, or DNA-based genes anyway, um, um, as the um, primary form of life on the planet um, and that seems like a significant um, possibility and if there's any chance of it happening then it seems like worth mentioning so um, anyway they don't um, go into that at all um, and um, they don't go into the um, the idea that cultural evolution is a new kind of evolution either. Um, Daniel Dennett, for example, is somebody else who appreciates that. Um, he describes evolution in, in terms of cranes with um, sex being a low crane and then um, multicellularity being a higher crane at the top of the list of um, cranes that he describes which um, kind of um, develop ways in which evolution can happen um, at the top of the list of cranes. He's got um, genetic engineering so he appreciates that um, intelligent design is a new kind of evolution, um, kind of a 
another step in the ladder of evolutionary progress that facilitates um, the generation of variation and speeds up progress. Um, but again, um, Peter and Richardson and Boyd don't really go into that side of things very much. Um, they don't um, see humans as being a particularly special species, um, and yeah, so it's, it's not um, not gone into in much depth. Um, so um, anyway, um, great book, um, very readable. Um, this is a popular work, um, not. Um, unlike their previous technical books on the subject and yeah highly accessible readable and enjoyable so um thumbs up for that one um enjoy